what's up everybody this is Firefish Tank and today I'm bringing you a video on the Nano Cherry Shrimp Tank and I've actually recently just um, reskated this tank as you can see and I tried to come out with some of, um, some, some artistic um, sort of, of aquascaping right here but um, you know it looks pretty good um, even though I'm, I'm not used to making um, you know really beautiful aquascapes but you can see here that um, one thing that I, I kind of forgot was that um, you know the rule of thirds where you um, basically have um, an, an odd number of rocks um, in here I actually have four rocks but the thing here is that I have three rocks over here and then I have one rock over here so it kind of it doesn't quite um, look unpleasing to the human eye but it kind of makes um, you know still an odd number because there's three over here and there's one over there that's odd numbers but all in all it's you know four rocks which is um, you know not the best thing I could do I should probably add one more but then I thought you know then the aquascape would get ruined because then there would be two over here and that would look really unpleasing if you would ask me then I, I would have to I, then I would have to have like four over here um, or something like that, I don't know, but um, but you can see here it looks really nice and what I tried to do here was um, was I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that I'm going to replace in here as well as some of the things that, that I uh, you know, that I want to to go with this tank so um, first of all the clunky filter you see over there that one is going to be replaced soon I'm going to get a hang on back filter um, because what I I don't really like a lot of things to be inside the a small nano tank because you know it looks really unpleasing and it fills a lot of room um, and it actually kind of ruined this aquascape because I tried to bank up the the substrate with some um, substrate supports which is basically just some very thick plastic um, um, you know very thick plastic small pieces of very thick plastic. Um, and you can see it works, um, you know, I put the rock down here, it kind of uh, made it um, the biggest rock in here and kind of uh, tilted it over a little bit and it actually s s um, supports the substrate quite well. If I lift up the, the lighting right here, you can see um, the substrate actually banks up. Sorry for the filter, it's a really annoying filter, just look at that. It's It has air and trapped inside of it, so... No matter what I do, it will get air trapped inside of it because it can't fit in here. Um, but you know, it works fine for now. Uh, but I'll get a, a hang on bag filter. Um, but you know, uh, I banked up the substrate. It looks really nice. It, it goes very well. And I used my old substrate down here. It's very far down the substrate. But bear in mind that I do use root tabs, um, you know, everywhere. So, um, and you can also see I'm running CO2. Um, right here, um, and um, you know, I tried to to make a high tech tank with this one, um, but what you might notice is that the lighting right here is only five watt LEDs. Even though five watt LEDs is really, really, really much, um, actually, um, you have to remember when you run LEDs, you don't have to have as many watts because um, if you got good quality LED. Uh, lighting it's actually going to be a lot stronger than a lot of other types of lighting um, you know apart from metal hair lights and stuff like that but that's really expensive to get so LED is a good alternative and you know it works well for the plants they really love it and um, you can see the plants in here are doing really nicely it has been set up for about five days now so um, the plants I got in here is uh, first we got um, Hydrocotyl verticulata this is a really amazing plant um, actually you can see because of the low lighting it's actually growing upwards um, and what I'm going to do today is that you can see here if we look at the LED strips right here well the LED um, amateur right here you can see that um, you can't quite see that because of the lighting is so bright but you got these small screws down here you can actually screw them off and you can actually put um, LED, you can kind of trap LED, aluminium uh, DIY LEDs out here so that we will get some lighting going on here in the front and here in the back which it kind of needs because you can see it only really lights up in the middle um, which is not a good thing but you know um, so I'll get, get that fixed very soon probably today um, so a lot of things is going to change and I'm going to get a white background 
Um, I'm going to replace the, replace the, um, the filter right there and get a hang on back filter. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, but you can see here that um, for sorry for the filter, it's it's a really loud filter actually, not that silent. But you can see here that the hydrocotyl verticillata is actually growing really nicely. Um, it grows upwards because of the low lighting. Um, when it gets high lighting, it will actually grow out in a sort of carpet and it looks like small mushrooms. Um, it's a really beautiful plant. Um, I've actually never seen this plant before, but um, you know, I found a stall that had it, and um, you can see the small cherry shrimp everywhere. See a little baby cherry shrimp out there. So that's really awesome. Um, and then I got some Liliopsis brasiliensis, you know, micro sorts. Um, you know, this will kind of grow into a grass, um, you know, a dense uh, grass sort of look in the back. Um, but it won't really grow in before I get the DIY LEDs um, on the back um, so that it would, uh, you know, light up uh, the, the back area of the tank because it really only lights up uh, some of the front parts of the tank and some of the um, the middle parts, um, not really out on the sides either, you can see it's kind of dark out here in the sides and I'm going to get that fixed. Um, but the problem is that if I want to do DIY LEDs, I'm actually going to use the same LEDs as I use on the saltwater tank. The saltwater tank is doing amazing by the way, sorry for not scraping the glass, but you can see right there. I'm going to make an update on that tank soon, so stay tuned for that guys. Um, I'm going to make some videos on the planet tank as well. You know, I'm going to to, to do a, a lot of different things. But um, you know, a thing here is that I'm, when I'm using the reef LEDs, these um, LEDs get really, really hot. Like it's insane. You have to remember that every single LED um, on this lighting actually is three watts, and that is quite a lot of lighting. Um, so you have to remember that it will release a lot of heat and I need to cool that down in some way so you know I'm going to get some aluminium um, to, to kind of cool it down um, and kind of place it on that aluminium um, and hopefully um, you know get some nice LEDs going on here I'm not going to make you know a dense LED strip like like these ones right here but what I'm going to do is that it's going to be probably one centimeter room between them because you have to remember 3 watt LEDs is quite a lot of lighting for such a little tank that is only 25 liters um, so you know um, but anyways um, I also have an Ichnodoris Rennie in the back but that was really just because um, you know the um, the clunky filter over there and I kind of wanted it to blend in so I just placed an Ichnodoris Rennie over there you know it's a plant that doesn't grow very tall um, but you know, um, the filter is what actually annoys me most at the moment um, because um, it really just looks clunky and it, it makes a really loud noise and things like that so I'm soon going to get um, a hang on back filter um, it's going to be much better and you won't be able to see the hang on back filter when I get a white background on um, so you know, but I'm, I'm trying to get a high tech tank running right here and you know for the the big planet tank, I'm trying to, to get a low tech tank, um, you know, kind of experimenting. Um, that's kind of my my, my point here. Um, I also got some few stems of Bacoba Caroliniana down here. And the reason I did this was because, um, well, first of all, my um, Cynodontis catfish actually ate all of my Bacoba. Um, they, for some reason, really like Bacoba. I don't know why, but they really do. And um, you know, I took the whole plant up and I saw some few stems right here that looks pretty healthy. You can see there, got new growth coming out. Um, I gave them a root tap um, down in the substrate. You know, I got the CO2 running, you know, um, liquid carbon, iron, manganese, cobalt, um, um, potassium, all that good stuff. So, um, you know, that is going to, to give them some growth. And what happens with Bacoba, as I said in the uh, other Planet Tank video, is actually that it will grow up to the surface and it will kind of make these blue flowers. So you can actually cut down the top of it and place them down with the, the blue flowers on the top, which looks really nice. So it can kind of blend into the hydrocotyl um, uh, vesiculata um, carpet. Um, but you know, 
the flowers will slowly die off. Um, well, I actually don't know because I've heard of some people who have uh, had flowering plants underwater while they're running CO2. So, you know, I'm going to experiment with that. Um, what uh, what I thought of, of doing with this tank to start with was actually just getting, um, you know, baby tears in here because baby tears are you know, um, very good when you have high lighting and CO2, you know, they'll grow out in a really nice looking carpet. But what I really wanted to do was try something different. Um, so I tried to get the hydrocotyl. I think it's a really nice looking plant. I think it's a lot better than, um, than you know, the, uh, the baby tears. And it's also a little bit easier to keep. Um, it's still a very challenging plant to keep. Sorry for the lack of focus right there. But it's still a very hard plant to keep, but it's um, a lot easier than baby tears. And you know, it's it's never pleasing to have a lot of baby tears that just die off because um, you know you don't you're not doing one right thing. And you know, I I do have enough time for this tank. You know, I will trim it. I will do this and that. I will do water changes every second week or so. Um, so you know it's going to be fine but um, I'm, I'm also going to dose and, and things like that and as I told you guys I'm going to do a lot of things with this tank um, here in in these couple of weeks but you know I'm going to put more time into my reef tank of course my and my 50 gallon planet tank most likely um, but you know it will be a tank that will uh, run for itself um, you know so that's awesome and um, also, you can see for the livestock in here, you know, I got the cherry shrimp, I showed you guys those um, right before. And what's really nice is that they really like this, uh, these rocks right here. Um, you can see they're just crawling around those rocks, they really like it. And there's one there, there's also one here. They also really like the Liliopsis brasiliensis, you can see there's one over here. There are just tons of them in here, honestly. Like, just look at that one over there as well. You know, I also got a moss ball over here in the corner also to cover up the filter. Um, but these shrimps really like it, so, you know, it will stay in there for a little while. Um, but it's not really a very pleasing plant, I could say. Um, so, you know, and I also got some pygmy corridoras, you know, um, my pygmy corridoras from the previous um, setup. You can see they're just down there. There are three of them right there. I have five of them. The three of them are down there. They're actually really, really nice little fish. They um, mostly come out when I feed them, but that's okay. Um, then I got them. Um, where is the uh, the gubbies? The gubbies are right here. I got some few gubbies. I also got a coolie loach. I don't know where he is right now because he hides everywhere. He sometimes digs himself under the rocks. I'm not quite sure where he is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he actually also hides under the filter. It's, it's a really strange fish. You can't really see him. But he's somewhere. Um, I saw him down at the mud ball yesterday, so he's doing fine. Um, and you know, I might get some more coolie loaches because coolie loaches are actually a really cool little animal. They'll come out when you feed them, they'll go all crazy on the bottom. And, you know, a very unique little fish. Um, so you know, um, if there's any other plants that I want for this tank, um, I, I do not quite know because what I'm trying to do is that, you know, when I remove this um, this clunky filter, I'm going to let the Liliopsis brasiliensis grow over here, but I might actually get hair grass, like, um, um, not dwarf hair grass, but just regular hair grass and get it over here so it will come up and look really nice over there, or maybe some... Um, um, some you know very very bright um, bright red plants um, something like that to kind of get this tank really nice looking um, uh, red plants would actually be a really good idea it would really contrast nice with the rest of the tank which is kind of dull um, but it's a really beautiful tank I really like it um, I personally think it's um, it's the most beautiful aquascape I've made um, so far um, you know I've seen I've done pretty much everything I could to make um, a successful aquascape. You can see here the rocks. Um, I tried to actually make the rocks kind of flat on top, um, so that it would look like um, like these plateaus where the shrimp could uh, could um, could go up on. I don't really want to add moss to these um, rocks. I just don't think it will look very nice. I think the rocks looks um, nice already. Um, but if I should, I would probably add Christmas moss or flame moss or something like that. 
But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little video on this tank. Um, I'm going to make an update on it, of course, when I get the hang on back filter and everything like that. Um, I'm going to make some updates on the reef very soon, so stay tuned, guys. Um, and then I'm hopefully going to, into the next month, make um, an aquarium science video on plants. Um, and, you know, it'll be really nice. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And see you guys in another video.